All right, welcome to the hopefully lengthy series on the VRage script editor for Space Engineers and kind of some of the or quirks in it and how to get some basic stuff up and running in it. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, there are two tutorials on the Steam Workshop, I believe. You can search for those that give you the basics of how to set it up, but we'll be doing it in video form to kind of show you a little bit of the issues with it because there are a lot of issues with it but hopefully they will be resolved in the future so let's start out with launching the tool and where it is whenever you have space engineers it usually goes into common under your steam and then you'll go into space engineers you'll go into tools you'll go into the vrage editor folder and then you will launch the visual scripting dot bat file um, and we'll close that and relaunch it, might as well. And that will open up, hopefully, this. Uh, now, the first time you launch it, you'll actually have to go in, into the settings and set your game content path. Now, that will vary, obviously, depending on where everything is installed, but usually just go into whatever drive you have, and then Steam, Steam Apps, Commons, Space Engineers, and then Content. So it's important to realize that uh, it's the Content folder, not the root Space Engineers folder. And it'll have you do that, you'll save it, you'll close it, you'll relaunch it, and you should be good to go. Now, obviously, that's pointing to the content folder. And it's important to realize that you can't use a visual script and attach it to something that is not under the content folder. So you can't go into your saved games and try and attach it to that. It's not even going to let you. It won't give you any warning as to what it's doing or what's going wrong and all that, but it will not let you attach to it. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. So the easiest way, if you really want to, uh, is to copy a saved file, uh, saved folder essentially with everything in it into your custom world. So this is something I created called Protect the Core. It's a multiplayer arena thing with scripting. And I have all these scripts in here that I don't actually use, but um, basically you'll copy everything over. I have a lot of procedural asteroids, but yours, you basically will need the sandbox.sbc. I think the SBS, um, is just the image. Um, or no, the thumbnail is the image. Not sure what the SBS is. That actually should be the settings for the world, I think. So, uh, and you can have the backup in there. It doesn't really matter. So it's in custom worlds. So when you launch space engineers, we're not launching it right now. We'll cover that. Um, hopefully next tutorial. When you launch it, you'll just do a new game, custom game, and then bam, it should launch right up and show that uh, Protect the Core Asteroid Final will be in there. So, But that's if you're doing a custom world. Um, if you're doing a campaign, it's going to be a slightly different process. So uh, I'm currently seeing if it's possible to even do a campaign. Um, you notice if you go into the campaigns folder, they have an official campaign. And in official campaign, they have scripts. And then you can see all these scripts. Uh, currently, a lot of these, when you open them, not all of them, but some of them, if you try, if you try and open them in the Visual Scripting tool, let's see if I can find one that does this. That actually loaded successfully, but let's see if we can load. There we go. What's going to happen is it's going to stop working and completely close the program. So. That's something to keep in mind. Only some of those work. You can um, you can actually edit these in something like Notepad++, and you can kind of search for what you're looking for to see kind of how they do it, um, as long as you can sort of decipher what goes where. It won't really. It's hard to tell what is connecting to what, but you can at least look at the blocks they're using. So that's kind of desperation mode, though. So. So back to this, um, right now we'll be covering, uh, basic level scripts, but we'll talk about, first we'll talk about getting a campaign since that's kind of what we're working on right now. So if we go to campaigns, you'll notice that this is a VS file right here and a VS file there. It's the same with those as well. Um, you know, state machines will have, I believe, different, um, extensions. So, but for if you go into in space engine if you go to like new campaign you'll see the official campaign right there well if you want to add a campaign you'll need to 
go ahead and create one of these files that will show up and that will point to where everything is. If you open this with the Notepad++, you'll just notice that the save file path, it shows the save file path, the name, um, and you can add stuff to the description as well. So uh, basically that's all that file is, but to create it, you can go to new and then you can go to campaign and then you go create, oh, the name, test campaign. Sure, no idea if that's there. And you can see there, the name there, the difficulty is you can do easy, normal, hard. Uh, you can select an image right there to show, that will show. You can select if it's multiplayer or not, menu localization. Um, don't know much about that. And that's pretty much it. And then you can add a campaign node and then you can choose your world here. Uh, and that's where it basically brings it up and you can go into campaigns, bam, and then you go into worlds, scenario builder, map thing, and then you look for the SPC file, bam. So that's how you select that. So, and then you would just save it out to campaigns, test campaign, bam. And now when you go in there, there it is, test campaign there, edit notepad plus plus, and it will basically, that's basically all we did there. So, so fairly straightforward for that. And all right, now we covered what uh, new campaign was, and now we're just going to go um, into like level scripts. Those are something that you attach to a, um, a sandbox file or uh, SBC file, uh, basically a world, and those will run when the level is loaded. So um, we'll actually just open one that I've already created. So this is... Oh, scripts level one right here and you can see it launches the level scripts right over here so that's uh first things if you start from scratch you're just going to have these four blocks here dispose update game started game finished <clears throat> i'll try and figure out what the dispose does no idea currently i'm sure that might be out there somewhere that seems like something they might discuss the update method uh runs every update of the, I believe it's every tick, which means that you have to be really careful about wh what you're running on the update. Um, and I know they have created like a delay uh, function that at least will only run whatever is that they'll put the delay script right there. And then it will only run th things after that every so often, every few ticks. That's something to keep in mind. And the method game started, that's everything that will happen when the game starts once. Bam, that's it, it's done. Unless you have some sort of loop or something like that. And then method game finish, when the game finishes, that's what happened as well, so. All right, so basically, if you're used to Unreal Blueprints, this is like the worst version I've ever seen of it, but uh, you have nodes that you connect by strings and that creates logic. I'm not gonna really explain much about that. You should know about that, or you can find a lot of different um, Unreal stuff to show you kind of the basics of how blueprints kind of work or visual scripting as it's called we're just going to cover a little bit here in uh, these options snap to grid is pretty simple it just means when you're pulling these they will kind of snap I don't really care at this point I'm just happy if it works center that centers you in the middle of your grid uh, back and forward I believe that might have to do if you have multiple ones open no big deal the next thing is the attach and that's the main important one. So this is attaching it to a world. Remember, it has to be under the content and then Snare Builder uh, and then the your SPC file you had open there. Now, I've already had it here, but you would basically, once it opens, you would have a loading, you can have a loading image and loading text. Uh, I don't have one now, but loading text, you can do whatever you want. And then you would hit add level script and then you would actually find wherever that script was and then attach that there, you can see it's already attached. And then we'll cover state machines once I actually learn what they are. So you'll be adding those later though. Well, technically you would probably add those first and then the level scripts if needed, so. <clears throat> but you can do basic stuff with just a level script, which is why we're starting with the very basic stuff. So that's the attach, save all, save all open files, save as, save, blah, 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 et cetera. Uh, v tools, we kind of already looked at that. There's nothing. The log is down here. 
uh, scripts explorers over here localization tool don't need uh, campaign properties is just that over there um, and plugins um, these I haven't used but you can look at that at your leisure and um, all right so next up is basically uh, the right click menu this shows kind of all the nodes that you could possibly switch node branching it's true true false with the comparison a for loop um, this one I had a little trouble with maybe we'll come back to that later sequence basically every time you add one it'll add another so uh, but the main thing is your function. Now, it'll when you hit function, it'll have a bunch of these. And you can expand, and you can do effects, environment, you know, a bunch of different stuff. If you're looking for something specific, you can hit control F and search for, say, drone. And you can find all the ones related to drone. Now, kind of take a look at what you have for... Uh, function nodes uh, because sometimes uh, what will happen is you'll look at this list and all of a sudden you realize that a lot of them are missing um, and sometimes you literally have to restart the visual scripting editor to get them back as far as I can tell so if we restart and reopen scripts bam then we go back into function and then you'll have all of these and a lot of times the system collections generic will be missing just entirely missing um, and sometimes other ones will be missing as well just certain random ones so if you think you're supposed to have something there restart the software and it should hopefully bring that back up for you uh, so we covered functions output that's usually for a script so if we're doing um, this is script selection this is adding if you did a new script that's usually a script that you can call for like the level script can call scripts and it's basically like a kind of a macro or, or something like that so you don't have to repeat the same thing it also help kind of collapse your graph so it's not massive you can just create the scripts for them variables variables are interesting so you can select the type of variable you have from the list but let's try something like a vector 3d and you're like okay let's just type in 100 for that and you're not getting anything in fact it apparently does not work at all so you're like well what am I supposed to do for a vector 3d well you go into here and you search vector and then you do create vector 3d and then you can type in numbers there and do a vector 3d return so um, and setters and getters are for variables so if we want to set let's say we did variable vector 3d and we're doing a variable variable name obviously it'll be whatever that um, you so you might think oh I can set the vector 3d that way well not quite it doesn't actually let you as far as I could tell I tried commas in there it didn't seem to work so um, so that doesn't that doesn't seem to work in my opinion as far as I can tell <clears throat> um, and getter that basically just gets your variable so let's actually create a variable here and we'll call it a string and we'll say now we'll do a setter and we're gonna set uh, we'll call this test. We're going to set test. All right. And we're going to do um, now we could do for the string, we could do a lot of these vector th d2 string a long to string you can do a lot of conversions by searching in th into that or what you can do is you can add a constant here and just say hello and we're going to set the value of test 
to be, which is this, to be hello. So that will, should, in theory, set test to be equal to hello. And then so, of course, when you need to grab it, you can grab a getter, and that will grab test, and it will just, which will be equal to hello, and then you can pop it into something that accepts a string, so. All right, and logic gates and or not XOR, NAND, or NOR. So uh, comments, just add a, a comment, and you can uh, select a bunch of the stuff. Uh, and, and then I believe you can do comment, and it will, nope, okay. That might, I'm getting confused, I think, with Unreal, but you should be able to, thought you were able to expand it and have it around all of them as a comment. I believe that's possible, but. <clears throat> all right, uh, now you'll notice I skipped over lists here. Lists are fairly complex, so if we have, all right, so. Let's see, if we do a new list, and it's going to be a type string, hit OK. Now you notice there's no way to input, except you can input manually. If you want to actually input from a variable, you have to use the add function. Um, so you can add it to the string list instance. So basically I'm, I would create a vector 3D, right now it's 0, 0, so middle of the map. A vector 3D to string, uh, string item is input that variable and it's adding it to that instance so it's adding it to the string it's like hitting the add button there so um and basically you have to call the add so um <clears throat> that will add it whenever you want it to be added you can add it at the game started um there and do a sequence so it's kind of up to you so the next part we're going to cover is over in the right hand side here it's events and key events You'll notice that sometimes they have <clears throat> duplicates. So events, mission started, and key events, mission started. You'll notice that a lot of times the key events, I don't know what the difference is, but they'll have a string mission name so that you can manually do it. Um, otherwise this one, for some reason, just doesn't have the ability for you to manually input that. I don't know why or what the difference is. So. Um, but you'll have to, you really want to look through these. These are a lot of the drivers for uh, when events happen. So they'll be separated off into your, into the logic. So there'll be a separate thing usually. Instead of coming off of the update, game started, game finished, they'll come off of their own thing. Whenever an NPC dies, this is what happens. And the NPC entity name is, is out of there. So again, this is like Unreal Blueprints or any other visual scripting thing. That's the variable that comes out and that's the event that happens. The NPC died and you would pull out more events from there or more and you input this variable into something else. So that's definitely something to look into because you can do something on when players spawn, when cutscenes end, um, timer block triggered, um, if a player picks up an item, drops an item, uh, if an item is spawned, area trigger left. We'll cover the triggers and stuff in the next part of this, since that includes adding triggers and stuff like that, entities inside of Space Engineers, which we'll cover next. Um, so back to the list and stuff like that. Uh, what I did actually is um, pulled out a lot of the special events like contains, removed, insert, clear, remove at, at, count, uh, stuff like that, and paste them in here so that I can copy and paste them when needed, so I can just add them there if they aren't showing up in the list, which tends to happen. <clears throat> 